Hi everyone, it's Denise from In Liquid Color, and I just want to start off this video by saying thank you to those of you who participated in the 500 subscribers giveaway on the last video where we painted this giraffe, and um, I'll be announcing the winner for that giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that announcement. So I just got back from my trip from Budapest uh, late last night, and I um, wanted to go ahead and record this video for you, but first off I just want to apologize for my cat who missed me very much and I spent lots of time with her already and will continue to do so after I film this video, but she's walking around by my feet and meowing, so if you hear her in the background, I'm sorry for the interruptions. Um, I wanted to share with you something that I found while I was in Budapest. So, of course when I went there I wanted to look up some of the art stores and see what I could find. And um, unfortunately, there's not a lot in the way of watercolors that were at the artist store that I went to. So uh, while I was staying there, I did a Google search and um, was looking up on different forums to see what people recommended. And for artist quality supplies, they recommended one store in particular. And I went there and um, had my suspicions confirmed that um, here in the States I always considered oils and acrylics more popular than watercolors, um, at least in the professional scene, and that held true in Hungary as well. The acrylic and oil sections were both huge and had tons of options and really great stuff, and my poor little watercolor section was super, super teeny tiny, and there I think were only four brands of paint plus like some really cheap sets. They had some Winsor Newton Cotman's, they had um, Schmincke, they had Rembrandt, um, and then they also had these little Van Goghs. So Van Gogh watercolors are a student grade, um, so I'll be comparing these to the common in this video. Um, and the reason I picked up these ones while I was there is I wanted to try and pick up something that wouldn't be accessible to me here in the States. So Van Gogh watercolors are available here, you can order them online, but from what I've been able to find, you can only find them in either predetermined pan sets or in tubes. Um, and I was able to buy these individually wrapped pans while I was there. So that's how I came to that decision. So hopefully you'll enjoy this review and uh, I look forward to sharing them with you. So these little Van Gogh pans come individually wrapped in these little um, paper wrappers like many other pans do and they have in really tiny writing they have the common name written on the side and then the pigment name is written even smaller on the back side here so I was able to see what I was purchasing um, before I picked them up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and swatch out the colors so that you can see them. And then I'm also going to compare them to the Windsor and Newton Commons, which is another student grade um, line of paints. These paints are made in the Netherlands. And like I mentioned before, you can buy them in the United States online either as predetermined or presets of uh, pans um, where you don't get to choose the colors or you can purchase them in tubes where you have a little bit more control over the colors that you're getting. The line has 40 colors. Um, it's a pretty small line of paint and they are, are missing a couple of I think fairly important colors namely they don't have a regular ultramarine. Um, the blue that I ended up getting was ultramarine deep which is still PB29, but it's a very different color than the other ultramarines that I have, and I'll show you that when I'm swatching them out. Other than that, I don't think there was anything too unusual about the colors that I chose. I have a yellow, two vastly different reds, the blue, a green, and um, two versions of kind of the burnt sienna or PB101 that I'll explain when we get to the swatches there. I'm going to be using these new little swatch cards for this video and hopefully if they go well for other videos in the future. Um, I got this idea from a woman on one of the wet canvas watercolor forums, so a big thank you to her for having showing me her version of this chart. Um, there is a swatch of the color itself just from mass tone or full strength down to diluted to almost water. And then there's a box for the opacity test. And then there's another box that I'm going to be doing a lifting test that you'll see um, later. The third box, I haven't decided what I want to do with it yet. It'll either be a complementary color mix or something like with salt for texture or 
some other thing that it, I wanted to give myself time to think about. But anyway, <laughs> um, here we are swatching out the colors. I think my favorite thing about the Van Gogh paints is how easy they are to re-wet out of the palettes. I mean, I'm talking like artist quality paint easy. Um, substantially easier uh, to re-wet than the commons are. So that's a big, big plus. I do want to apologize for my camera. I thought I had finally figured out. I was really excited. I had a new setting that made the color of the wood at the beginning of the video uh, a lot more accurate. But when we got to swatching out the paints, it likes to try and um, compensate for <laughs> color changes. And all of these paint swatches look a bit washed out. They are actually incredibly vibrant paints. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of them are actually more opaque than I expected them to be. Now we're going to look at the Van Gogh side by side with the Winsor Newton. And one pro right away for Van Gogh is that they had more single pigment colors than the Cotman's. Um, the Cotman's have a lot of hues which are made up of various different tones. However, you will notice that the Van Goghs are more opaque than the Cotman's, which was really interesting given that they actually self-declare in their blurb that they have very transparent colors. Um, yellows and, and warm reds are typically more opaque, but the Winsor Newton does a really good job of being very transparent in that regard. Um, these reds are incredibly orange reds, but they're not as orange as the camera makes them seem. But they are very close together in color. I would say that the permanent red light from Van Gogh is a little bit flatter, there's less like granulation than or, or texture than the Cotman's, but otherwise they're pretty comparable. Now my cool reds are not the same tone and they shouldn't be compared as the same tone. PV19 and PR206 are quite different, um, but I just wanted to throw them in there to let you know there wasn't a closer red that I could come to um, that was available in the shop. Now, my ultramarines are the same pigment, PB29, and they are vastly different colors. I don't know if you can tell on the video, but the ultramarine deep is very, very purple, um, whereas the Cotman ultramarine is much more neutral. Both of them granulate, both of them are transparent, both of them easily lift, um, but they are very different tones, and the Van Gogh series doesn't offer a regular ultramarine. I'm not sure why they chose to do the ultramarine deep instead. So the Viridian is pretty much the same in both brands. Um, the Cotman seems to be a little bit more vibrant in the mass tone, but they're very, very close. It was easier to lift um, the Van Gogh Viridian off of the paper than it was for the Cotman. It is a very staining color in general, so it's not going to lift as well as like an ultramarine would. Alright, so here's where things get a little bit interesting. I mentioned earlier in this video that I really appreciated the single pigment mixes that Van Gogh offered over the uh, Windsor Newton colors. But that's not true for the Burnt Sienna. The Burnt Sienna is a mix between PR101 and PBK11. And it's very, very brown, and it's more on the side of like a warm burnt umber than it is a burnt sienna. So when I first walked into the store, not knowing any of this information, I saw the light oxide red was PR101 and I decided to pick that one up instead. What's not showing on the camera as well is that that color is incredibly opaque. Um, and so I ended up going back before I left and picking up the burnt sienna to see how different and they are just night and day different. They are completely different colors. So I'm glad that I picked them up, but you'll notice all three of these that use PR101 are very different pigments. So if you want something close to a burnt umber, the Van Gogh Burnt Sienna is a good choice. If you want a really orange burnt umber, the Cotman's a good choice. Um, and then the light red oxide is, I assume, similar to like a Venetian red or an Indian red. I don't own any of those colors though because I don't like opaque uh, watercolors, so I've stayed away from them in the past. So here they are just all, all once again so that you can, you can kind of see the color side by side. Overall, I would definitely recommend them. I love how easy they are to reactivate out of the pans. Uh, they're very, very vibrant. If you want something that's more transparent, maybe I would recommend the Cotman's over these. Um, but in general, I, I was really happy with them. 
So I have just a couple of quick mixes here. I didn't want to bore you with all of the different uh, mixes that I usually go through, but I wanted to show the important ones. The ones on the top row are Ultramarine with Burnt Sienna, and Ultramarine with the Light Iron Red, and if you don't mind the opaqueness of the set, the second one, I think that makes a nicer tone. The first one is a little bit green, um, and I think the second one makes a nicer gray. I also have Viridian mixed with the warm red and Viridian mixed with the cool red to show a deep forest green and a nice moody purple. Um, it, it's a nice range of colors that you can get from them. All right, everyone, it is time for the winner of our 500 subscriber giveaway to be announced. I just want to take a moment to thank everyone so much for participating, for commenting, and letting me know your favorite, most inspiring videos. And without further ado, we are going to go ahead and announce that, drumroll please, the winner is Emerald. Thank you guys so much for uh, participating, liking, subscribing, commenting, all that fun YouTube stuff. Emerald, go ahead and send me an email at my business email. I'll put the link in the description below or on Instagram. Um, thank you guys all so much for tuning in, and I will talk to you later.